One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me, that's right. And Everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Experience Michiana. There's three of us here today because I'm Kelly, Courtney, and Bob Ross. Bob Ross. <laughs> we're going to find out all about the Bob Ross painting technique here at Happy Tree Studio in Warsaw, Indiana. Yeah, I'm super can, excited about I it. You can't see. tell. I forgot my Bob Ross wig. Oh, I got you, girl. I okay. got it. <laughs> okay. And we're also going to be talking to Chris today. Is going to show us what Mishawaka Greenhouse is doing. I'm all about sustainability too, and mm -hmm. so you're going to see some ways that we're including sustainability here locally in Michiana. Yes, yeah, a very important topic, especially right now. But we're going to have a lot of fun because we're headed over to Potawatomi Zoo. Yes. And I think that they get the oh, I, you know what? Let's not tell them. Let's all just go together. There's so many yeah. new things to see. Check it out. I'm so excited to be here back at Potawatomi Zoo mm -hmm. in South Bend. There is so many new things here to see and do. Yes, there are. And one of the things I heard is that they have a rhino that you can pet. Have, no way. Did you ever do that? No. No, me neither. And oh then, my gosh. But like you said, a lot, I think there's a baby flamingo. Oh, oh my goodness. it is so cute. Yeah. I've seen it on, on all of their social media pages. Okay. And this is going to be so exciting. I know we were supposed to have Dave with us here today, but unfortunately, well, uh, we haven't been able to find him. Well, that's okay. Why don't we go on and have some fun? All right. Maybe he'll catch up with us later. Maybe. We'll see. Let's go. It has been a while for me, but Josh, I am so glad to be back here in Potawatomi, and it's good to see you. Yeah, no, I know. I believe the time goes so quickly. Yeah, no, it's so yes, great it to does. see you, and there's so many changes to so show you. So many changes. Remember last time I was here, what happened? I was holding a little turtle. <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> it kind of, you know, did a little it, something on well, me. I had, to go, I had to go to the restroom is yes, what it, it had did. to do. Yes, it did, right? <laughs> Not today, though, right? Not today. We got you behind. We got glass in front of you today. <laughs> now, what are we doing? so cute. I really kind of want to take one home with me. As I'm sure people say that to you. You know what? And I think you would regret it. See how it's eating the mice? First of all, you'd have to, these guys eat mice, so I don't know if you'd want to have to deal with that at home. But uh, these guys are actually a wild cat. So even though they're very similar to looking like house cats, they're called sand cats from Africa. Um, believe it or not, they're full grown, so they're a small cat. Oh, they are um, but these guys are pretty ferocious. I mean, these guys can leap in the air and grab birds in the wild. And um, so they're, uh, they're, they're a pretty amazing animal. But these one of the new species we have here at the zoo. So How long have they been here? So we actually got a trio, a male and t uh, uh, two males and a female. And as soon as they got here, they gave birth to a litter of four kittens. So we have seven now. Um, so what you see in this exhibit here in our learning center is five males. Uh, but they've been here probably for about six months now. Um, so they've really started acclimating. Um, but you can see the keep. What's really cool about these animals um, is just the care that goes into taking care of them. The keepers. <laughs> Their diets are really important, so the keeper actually has to hand feed each one of them to make sure they're getting the amount, right amount of uh, mm -hmm. mice and everything, or one would try to eat them all and try to keep the others away, so. So have you seen this thing on YouTube? I think it's called the Circle Cat or something. Did you see that? I haven't seen that, oh no. Oh my goodness, they, 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 like, they, take, they can take a whole chicken and drag <laughs> it into the closet and everything and eat it. Are, are they kind of like that? They are, I mean, the power in cats are like, I mean, if you've ever seen videos, you, I've seen leopards in the wild that have actually taken like a baby hippo or a baby rhino completely up into a tree and eat it. It's just the strength that they have in their neck. So even though they're a small little cat, I mean, yeah, they have a lot of power to them. So what, how, what's kind of the way you take care of them? I mean, are they kind of on their own or? Yeah, I mean, like I said, he has to hand feed them. I mean, they've got some really cool adaptations. They come from really dry desert regions. They can actually go almost their whole lives without actually drinking water. Really? They can just collect the moisture from the food that they uh, that they eat in the wild. So they've got some pretty cool adaptations. Um, you know, and we just have to really manage, especially for the breeding programs and everything. Um, you, I've talked about before in the past, the species survival plans and accredited zoos. We don't buy and sell our animals. They're all part of these important breeding programs to keep the genetics and the diversity. Um, so these guys are part of that. So we're really excited to just be part of another breeding program here at the zoo. That's great. So I, I see that the trainer is not afraid to be in there with them. <laughs> <laughs> He's very afraid. cautious. You know, training though is very important. You know, they are wild animals. We don't want to cuddle them. We don't want to, you know, it can be dangerous. But being able to have this relationship with them, we can get weights on them. We can check, um, you know, there's so much we can do just for their health and everything. So this kind of behavior is really important what the keeper's doing right now. And that's 
one of the things that's really important that you do here is that you really take great care of the animals. We do, yeah. People, I mean, there's there's programs. I mean, we, we work with uh, 250 accredited zoos across the country. So as soon as we got these guys, we're talking to other zoos. What do they do? What's the best care? Um, making sure that they have sand to dig in. Just providing all those natural things that they would have in the wild. Is that why they're called sand cats? They love being in there? They, well, they come from the desert, so oh, they're called okay. so they're called sand cats just because they live in really um, humid or hot deserts. So is yeah, that, dry deserts. Like part of Africa that they're from. Um, so you can find these guys in Kenya. Um, they're different kind of sporadic parts of uh, the Africa, but definitely the hot, hot regions. So the Sahara Desert's a big one where they come from. All right, great. Well, I know there's lots of new things here at the zoo, so let's get going because I hear there's a little baby flamingo. There's a baby flamingo. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to introduce you to one of my favorite animals. We're going to have a little meet and greet with uh, uh, one of our top animals here at the zoo. So we're really excited about that. We're going to do a reveal or we're going to wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. So there's this awesome new experience here at Potawatomi mm -hmm. Zoo. Oh. Hello. And look who's here! They have the experience at the zoo! <laughs> Listen, <laughs> all I'm going to say is I currently have my hand in a rhino's pit. Oh. Okay, oh. so. Okay, oh my gosh, oh my like God. up close and personal. This is Josh, what is this rhino's name? So this is Masaba. He's five years old, and this is actually, um, you, since you've been here, I don't think you met the rhino yet, I have, have you? I have not. Yeah, you got to touch him. Okay, let me touch so him. He actually came to us a little over okay. a year ago. No, he's like, no. He's like, no. Like, no. He'll turn around, he'll come back. But this is really exciting. This is actually an opportunity that people that come to the zoo can have. You can go online and register and actually come and meet the rhino. Hi. Oh. And what was the rhino's name? His name's Masamba. Masamba. So, yeah. So Masamba. he, uh, like I said, he came to us about a, a little over a year ago. We've never had a rhino at the Potawatomi Zoo. So this is a pretty exciting uh, hey, animal in addition to have here. And he came right to you when you called him. Like, it, it was like a dog. You were just calling a dog you over. Know, and he, he, wanted, he doesn't want food from you or anything. He just wants these scratches. Whatever I was telling you. So we just got to, we got to keep scratching him or he'll walk away. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but you can see he's been digging. He digs holes. He's got a mud wallow here. We were kind of talking about that level of care that we provide the animals. I mean, in the heat, he loves the mud wallow. So yeah. I mean, it's, it wouldn't be uncommon for him to come up here and just be covered in mud. Um, his face is much softer than his body. Yeah, yeah. No, but this is similar to what an elephant would even feel like. So if you ever yeah. wonder what an elephant feel like, it's almost kind of that leather feel. Mm. Uh, but these guys, um, so if you know the northern uh, white rhino actually went extinct this past year. Uh, oh, nice. These guys, there's only about 100,000 left of the southern white rhino, so they're critically endangered. And it's because of that dang horn up there. Um, it has no medicinal uses whatsoever. It's made out of the same thing as your fingernail. Um, but there's many cultures that believe it does. They'll put it in soup and stuff. So unfortunately, they're still being poached at a, at a high rate. So that's why zoos are important to get people here to educate people about what's happening with that's rhinos in the wild. It's so. quite the shot he's giving us right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> he wants that butt scratch. Yeah, yeah. He so, definitely does. Yeah, no, it's yeah. awesome. All right, and I know we're going to go and have a look at some uh, plink, uh, pink flamingos pink now flamingos. as well. OK, the squawking is very loud. They're very excited. And we're in the flamingo. I guess this is kind of a, a makeshift den. Why are they in the den right well, now? So we have this because we are very excited to announce that we have a little chick this year. Look at that. Um, oh, and you know what? We had actually a red-tailed hawk that nested in this area this past year. And, okay. red, and the juveniles, they're not very smart. And they're flying around here a lot. So oh. just to be safe until he gets a little bit of weight on him, we just wanted to make sure he's protected from the hawk. So we kind of made this little outdoor area that they could come into. And That's great. And when was the baby born? So this baby now is about, I want to say, four weeks old now. Um, but what's really cool about this is it usually takes about 20 to 25 flamingos in a flock to be able to have chicks. There's something about the mating ritual and everything. Uh -huh. We only have 11. So this is a very special chick that happened. How often do they mate? Um, so every season they uh, they build these big they, okay. they build these big mounded nests inside and they hatch out the eggs. Um, so uh, so this is kind of a, a cool thing even in the zoo world that we have a chick this year. Yeah, and obviously the baby chick looks very different from the adult version. 
Tell us how that, uh, how it changes over time. So, so over time, it's going to start getting this pink color. Here, I'm going to grab the, uh, we got some uh, attack flamingos coming over here. <laughs> um, they're very protective of their baby. Um, uh -huh. But you can see this pink color. That actually comes from a, a creel that they eat in the wild. Yeah. Um, so as she starts to age, um, he'll stay white, though, believe it or not, for a very long time. So he'll actually almost be the size of a flamingo, still be white, oh, really? and then slowly start getting that coloration okay. coming in. And the beak is different, too. I know that's one of the things that changes, too. The beak's You're different. You're like so as tall you, as me. This is another interesting thing. You know how like a lot of birds will feed worms and stuff like that? Uh -huh. These guys feed a crop milk and it actually, it's weird, it looks like blood. It's really weird. It, it's red and it start, it comes out, they feed the baby chick. So if the baby chick had this curved uh, beak, it wouldn't be able to be fed by the parents. So as they're young, they have that beak so that they can easily be fed. Uh, okay. Um, so. Just hanging out, just hanging out with the flamingos. Yeah, but we've been, very, cool. I know, we've been really excited about this because I mean, we've kind of had this kind of just same flock for so many years to start yeah. getting some babies in here and start. Which I know, it. I mean, I've been coming to the zoo for years too, and you can see them through the windows too with all the nests, and so it's yeah. really been interesting. I love seeing everybody share their experiences and watching the process <laughs> of of the egg and eventually becoming an actual baby. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is. We got a we got a ham over here in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, these are one of my favorites. People love the flamingos, so. I, I do too, and now that I know they're actually as tall as me, this is really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So, <laughs> awesome, well, so, thanks yeah. for showing us. Yeah, this. absolutely, this is great. Well, this has been another amazing day at the zoo here for us here at Experience Michigan. And I know all of our community would love to come and enjoy this too. You guys have later hours available this year too, right? We do, yeah. So this summer, uh, so it's basically June through August 31st. We stay open until 8 o'clock. Just gives you know parents that are working an opportunity to come to the zoo. Yeah. Um, so on August 31st, we'll stop that this year. But we plan on just keeping that as a tradition here at the zoo. That's fantastic. And you yeah. were saying another fun fact about the baby itself. Yeah, we, yeah, we weren't mentioning that. So we actually moved, we had to move the egg, the parents that laid the egg wasn't really taken care of it so we moved it under this pair who's never had a fertile egg really? um, just to experiment to see what happens so they actually hatched it out and are raising it oh! um, so they're kind of like surrogate parents for this uh, for this chick so yeah it's kind of a cool uh, cool thing that's awesome was there anything else that you want to share with us about what the zoo has coming up we just i mean you know we got the draft construction happening I'm so for excited October. For that. we're hoping for the drafts that are going to be coming in um, the zoo is just under a revitalization period right now you're going to see in the next two to three years we've got a plan for brand new concessions we're bringing bears to the zoo uh, brand new habitats awesome. for the lions, brand new habitat for the tigers, getting away from the old school cages and actually yeah. having natural environments for the animals. Um, so we're th this is definitely a regional destination now and we're really excited it about it. It is. And you know, I have kids, we've been coming here for years too and we just got our zoo membership again great. after That's the last great. time yep, that yep, I was yep. here. And I brought the kids and we were just amazed how many new things that there are here because yep. we showed some today, but there's a baby red panda out we there too. We have baby too. red pandas. We've got uh, genets in the learning center, which are a new animal to the zoo. We've got bush babies coming. Um, yeah, there's, we've always got some new animals coming in and changing. That's so, so awesome. Well, thanks yeah. for being such an awesome thing in our community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We are so happy to be experiencing the joy of painting. Yes. I feel like bringing it back to PBS roots. It really is. It is. I mean, and you have the t-shirt today. I have the t-shirt. Proved it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're here at Happy Tree Studio in Warsaw, Indiana, and we're going to learn more about the Bob Ross technique. We have with us Tanisha, who is the owner here. This is so exciting to have something like this in our community. I think it's the only one I've ever heard of. I didn't even know they had something like this. Oh, yes. They have um, CRIs um, throughout the United States and some out of the country. Awesome. And now you just opened recently, right? Um, three or four weeks ago. Yep. <sighs> So what inspired you to want to open up? I mean, we know it's Bob Ross right here yes. standing amidst the man. us. The man, the man, yeah. the, man, the, the legend. legend. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what was it about you that kind of really endeared you to it all? Um, I watched PBS growing up, and you know, every day that he was on, I watched him and l would love to learn to paint like him one day. And my husband found it online, and it all went from there. So you're actually certified in the yes. Bob Ross technique. Where did you get certified? I got certified in New Smyrna Beach, Florida at the Bob Ross Art Workshop. So they actually have like a workshop yes. where you can get yes. trained Bob to Ross do this. Bob Ross opened it up in 1992. Awesome. And so all of the paintings here that you do, there's some that are Bob Ross inspired for some of the shows that you may have seen at home too, but you also have some of your own inspirations too. Yes, it's done in the Bob Ross technique still, but okay. um, I do Bob Ross originals and then my own. And in the wet on wet. And we yes. love that you called it Happy Tree Studio because yes. that's one of the things. It's it's all about the joy of painting. And he was so happy. And that's something that you want to kind of pass on to everyone that comes here. Yes, I want everyone to enjoy themselves when they come here. I don't want them to feel pressured. And everyone comes out with a great painting. 
That's There's awesome. no mistakes, just happy little action. There you go. No <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> the pressure is good. I have to tell you, Tina, yes. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure here because uh, Courtney is an artist. She called your daughter paid. Well, my daughter. I'm not the artist. Well, you're pretty she good. is. I mean, you're pretty crazy, good. I'm not. But, but you say that you can learn how to paint. Yes. Like Bob Ross in one, one day. day. One yes. day. Yes. I love it. How about I an hour? That. We got about, <laughs> about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and so you do have group parties here, but you can also do some other things, too, for people who want to come and learn, too, right? Yes. Um, I can do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can learn specific things that you want to learn more, like trees or mountains. Okay. and then Or you can, you can pick whatever painting you want to paint, and we'll paint a painting. And it's just more one-on-one. -on -one. Just me and you. No, I, well, that's two of us. I, I know, I've been doing like the same style of trees my whole entire life. It's just like one arch, one arch, and branch, 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 branch. Well, at least you And then dabbing that. the leaves <laughs> everywhere. So this is really yeah, exciting. Is, so what are we going to do? You want to paint season 16, episode one of Bob Ross's. Two seasons. It's going to be the oh. winter one. Oh, oh I love awesome. that. Perfect. Perfect. It's on its way. Uh, it is. And the it's only two cool. colors, so that's great oh, about it today. Super well, easy. That's yes. good. I can't yes. mess up two colors. <laughs> Let's hope. I know, yeah, you're right. <laughs> We're going to make happy little clouds. You can put one cloud, you can put two clouds, you can put three clouds, put as many clouds in there as you're going to want. I can spend all day doing clouds. <laughs> I'm going to start putting in my first peak. Why do mine look like Band-Aid straps? <laughs> oh. And we're just gonna blend these mountains down into the canvas. Then once we have our mountains, we're gonna add some snow. And it always helps to make noises. <laughs> Here, so we're going to sweep it out like that. There's our mountain. And we're just tap, 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 tapping that into the canvas. And pull down. Instant reflections. Just straight liquid white, and we're gonna grab that, roll the paint again. We're gonna cut right into that canvas and make a water line. Touch, touch, touch. Tanisha, I have to say, like Bob Ross, you are a miracle worker. Oh, thank you. This you is guys. amazing. You're like a master artist now. I know. I'm so proud of myself. Right, 20 I, minutes in a day. I know. I've never, I've never done anything like this, and I never thought I could. <laughs> the Bob Ross technique is so easy and so fun to learn, and you guys both did a great job. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I can't believe yes. I actually made a tree that didn't look... I mean, I do have some stick figure trees. I mean, these are more. No, these style. look great. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> mountains look like mountains. Their bushes look like bushes. You did really great. And delicious, like you said, when everyone leaves here with their painting, they yes. are really happy. I mean, I'm very happy. <laughs> yes. Yes. I make sure everyone gets the attention that they need. If they're struggling on something, you know, I'm there for them, whatever they need. And they come out with a great painting when they leave. Awesome. How can people get in touch with you, Tanisha? Um, HappyTreeStudio.com. All right. Cool. And all your information's there to sign up for classes and dates and times. Awesome. Okay. Well, it was so much fun here in Warsaw, Indiana. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us yes, today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Hey, one of my favorite things has been to show you how you are experiencing sustainability in Michiana, and you don't even know it. So right now, I'm at the Main Street uh, underpass in Mishawaka, which is a prime spot where you can experience sustainability. It's not about the road, it's about what is right next to the road. So I'm gonna talk with Jake Crawford, he's the landscape manager for the city of Mishawaka, to tell us about the landscape that we're looking at right here next to the underpass. So, Jake, there are pears on this tree and it's making my mouth water. Could I just pick one when they're ready or what's going on here with all this? So this whole location here, including the greenhouse and our fruit orchard, is all a community you pick uh, vegetable fruit garden um, that's just available for the community to enjoy. 
this project wow. was uh, started with the Mishawaka High School Landscape and Garden Club. Uh, a couple of years ago in 2019, we finished construction on this whole area, transforming just an empty space into a high production garden and community asset. Well, and it really is producing a lot. I see beds and beds of food over here. And so I could just come and pick food. Yeah, so the model that we want to have for this is one that is community engaging. And so people can volunteer to help take care of the vegetables here. People can also help themselves to the produce we have. Uh, we have a lot of different items like zucchini, potatoes, uh, different things like that that people from all over the community are enjoying now and people are welcome to help themselves to. So what if people don't know if it's ready or not? How would they learn a little bit about, you know, what is that plant? Can I eat it? How do I eat it? Is that something you can learn here? So most often we'll do posts on our Mishawaga Parks page, letting people know when, when food is ripe. Uh, sometimes we do put out little signs into our beds. Mm. Um, they'll say, I'm ripe, pick me or I'm ready. Um, so you can look for those as well. And usually my crew, my staff and I are, are here usually in the morning from 7 to 7.30 and then also about 2.30 to 3 at the end of the day. And those are great times to just connect with the landscape staff from the city as well. So I noticed something over here that's a little weird. I think we should take a look because I do know what it is and when it's ready. Uh, so what if I want to share what I know? about this strange vegetable, the kohlrabi, yeah. which I love. And this one does look about ripe. Um, so I know that it's ready, how to harvest it, how to cook it. Is there a way that I can help out in this garden? I mean, it's a gorgeous space. I kind of just want an excuse to hang out here. Yeah, so we are always looking for volunteer help and people to engage with for the community. We have some volunteers that help in other parks, but we currently don't have any major volunteer activity here at the greenhouse. So if you're really interested and you want to become more involved, if you want to help shape the landscape and what goes in and all the all the planting out here, uh, just get a hold of the parks department and it's a great way to, to connect with me and the others that help take care of this area. So one thing I wanted to share with folks about is how they can experience sustainability in action. So we've talked a little bit about, you know, it's fresh, healthy food. That's really important is sustaining people, right? It's also free, which makes it much more economically possible to, to eat healthy. Um, and then there's that social aspect, too, of being able to help out in the garden. You talked a little bit about what used to be here. Can you tell me a little bit more about how this is actually improving the environment here in Mishawaka? So around the greenhouse, as we move our way around there, uh, we have quite a, a mix of different plants to help our pollinator communities. Uh, we get a lot of uh, bee and butterfly activity around the greenhouse, probably more so anywhere else in the city, except for maybe Beater Park, which has pretty extensive mm. flowers as well. Um, so I think that's really one of the best areas. And what's neat about that is the landscape design there was done by the students in my landscape and gardening club. When wow. we planned this, they were really proactive in shaping what would go in. And that was a big component that they wanted to include in this project was a way to kind of help our environment with native plants and pollinators. So the youth of Mishawaka actually invested their time and knowledge to improve the environment here. Let's take a look at some yeah. of the flowers. Oh gosh, it's just really beautiful here. I mean, if you do come up off of the underpass, yeah. you're, you'll be stunned by what you see right now, especially this time of year. Well, thank you. Uh, a lot of what is in here is a, a mix of some native, some non-native, but all very showy flowering plants. Um, every year we leave some open space for students to put in annuals, things that they've grown in the Garden Club program. And then we also just have a mix of perennials that we like to hold on to as well. Um, but it's very densely planted with a very large variety and we did that just to diversify our planting just not only for color and show, but just for our pollinators to be able to have access to flowers um, for an extended period of the season. Yeah, it looks really thick with plants that are blooming, which takes down on the weed weeding work, I would suspect, because there's no room for them to come yes. up. And much more beautiful, rich ecosystem than an empty lot. Right, you know, originally this was all just grass 
uh, this entire strip here with of just a few trees and um, so now it's a, it's a pretty rich vibrant um, asset for the community to enjoy. Wow and this was really started by the community. This wasn't just something you said hey this be cool and the kids want to do it. Um, this I'm, I'm looking at a lot of names on your signs here. Yes, yeah, folks that helped out. Yeah, this was a big uh, community type project. The Mishawak Education Foundation was the chief sponsor. Um, we also had significant donations from many others as well. Um, students helped design, build, fundraise everything for this, and they helped maintain it currently. And all the names here on these signs, all these people contributed uh, to help make this a reality. And so it's a really, it's a big win for the community with so many people coming together to make it happen. Wow. So it, it's summer now. I don't really want to hang out in a greenhouse at this time of year, but you do have a year-round thing. Um, what else going on inside? Yeah, so we can take a quick look inside. Like you said, it's, I turned the fans off. It's probably pretty toasty. <laughs> so this is the inside of our space. During the summer, the landscape wow. department primarily uses it just as a hub for storing plants as we are doing renovations and moving things out into the parks. We do offer some classes periodically throughout the year, but primarily the space is used with School City of Mishawaka with the Young Adult Services class and my garden club. Um, we're trying to kind of expand some of those programs to engage the community in different ways, uh, but we have pretty limited staff, and so trying to fit all that in, we need some community partners. We've partnered with Unity Gardens and a few others to do some classes in here as well. Um, nice. Makes it hard to do classes in here when it's over 100 degrees, <laughs> though. Um, so primarily most of our class activities would be outside during the summer months. Well, this is really a fantastic resource, Jake. Thanks so much for encouraging the kids to yeah, carry this dream forward to provide you know great free healthy food for the community a place to learn and socialize and really beautifying the environment so folks should get off the road turn in uh take a look and uh you know hang out have a snack there's some peaches out there too <laughs> yeah they're getting close to being ripe so definitely come check those out cool thanks a lot yeah thank you should we show them uh, okay here's the final oh, product we are artists! Can you believe it? I am so proud of myself. No, can I just can I just love on myself for a You can totally. I'm so proud of myself. I've never been able to paint anything in my life and look at And you did this. it. I see I mountains. Can. I can actually visualize yeah. Thanks, me being in the winter. I can actually see a mountain. I can. It actually looks no, like one. No, no, no. We, it was so much fun. And Tanisha was great. She really knew how to walk yeah. us through this. Yeah, and I had so much fun at the zoo. I can't believe we got to pet a rhino today. I know. I, I, ah. yeah, I was kind of a little, a little intimidated, but he was so sweet. He was really yes. nice. And the flamingo um, gave me a little haircut. Oh. I got some little nimbles on my hair, he too. He was trying to get selfies with you, too. He, was, was, he, he really was. was. He was, awesome. was all about it. Well, don't forget that you can always share some experiences that are in your area. We'd love to check them out, too. So go onto our Facebook page, yes. Experience Michiana, and let us know what we can visit, too. You know, and we've been experiencing a lot of great things lately. The yoga, yeah. the pedal board mm, yoga. I'm still sore from that. That's right. <laughs> and now here, this wonderful painting. Can't wait to see what we're going to experience yeah. next week and make sure that you guys join us so we can all experience it together. We'll see you then. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.